Welcome back. Um, in this short video, um, I will explain how the serial correlation test for panel data actually works. We have covered this in a different video, but I did not explain um, how this test really works behind the scenes. So this um, video is, uh, I'm afraid, theory. So whenever I have um, a problem in theory to address, I do um, a few steps. So the first thing I do is I write down what I need to basically show. Yeah. So what is it I want to do in this case? Now I want to show the following. If you remember this video, um, we have um, a regression where we um, regress the change in an error term, so in a residual, on its lagged value, so something like alpha plus beta delta epsilon i t minus 1 plus another error term. Yeah, so this is basically where we are starting and we argued that um, our null hypothesis um, in this particular test states that beta is equal to minus one half. And now in this video I want to explain why it should be minus one half, which basically implies no serial correlation. Yeah, so the idea of the test is if I can reject that, I show there is serial correlation in my panel data model. And this goes back to the Woolrich test. So how can I show that under the null hypothesis, uh, the beta is equal to minus one half? All right, the first thing I do is I write down what do I actually know, yeah? So what do I actually know? First thing I, first thing I know is that um, we run our standard um, model. I now just use um, different symbols here for the coefficients. So it's a, b, x, i, t, and then we have an error term in this, um, in this panel data model. Um, and um, we know that under the null, so under the null, yeah, so under H0, the following has to be true. So if there's no serial correlation, we know that epsilon IT, so the error term in our original model, is IID distributed, normal, with a mean of zero and a constant variance, sigma square. IID means identically um, independently distributed. Good, let's get into this. So if this is the case, um, what can I say about my auxiliary um, model? The other thing I also know is in this auxiliary model, which I now indicate here as equation one, <coughs> I know that the beta coefficient, because there's only a single um, independent variable, the lagged change in the residual. So I know, because it's a single independent variable, that my beta coefficient is actually equal to the correlation coefficient. So I can write this as the covariance of my dependent variable and my independent variable divided by the standard deviation of um, both variables. Okay, so that's just um, coming out of the fact that we run an OLS regression. Yeah, so this I also know. Yeah, so that we also know. So we know that the error term should have this behavior under the null. We know this is um, what we would expect um, for our coefficient because we only have a single um, independent variable. Good. Now, what else um, can we say um, about this? Delta epsilon it is, of course, epsilon it minus epsilon it minus one by definition. Yeah, that happens by definition. Yeah, so that's um, useful. Then if I want to talk about um, the um, standard deviation, which is here in the denominator, um, what can I say about this? Yeah, so if I take um, the variance of that, I just now use this as, as a variance operator. Some people write var, I don't really have to. 
So that's the variance of the change in um, epsilon it. So what, what is that? It's the variance of epsilon it minus epsilon it minus 1. Now, if, if um, epsilon it is, as we see in equation 2, iid distributed, has a mean of 0 and a variance, a constant variance of sigma squared, I can already write this down. Yeah, so basically what I can obtain here, just following standard rules for um, a, a variance operator, um, I can simply write this as the variance of um, epsilon it plus the variance of epsilon it minus 1. The covariance doesn't matter because epsilon it and epsilon it minus 1 are independent, hence they're uncorrelated, okay? If you have any questions about these steps, just leave a comment below and I can provide some further guidance. Yeah? And now, of course, we know that um, for all time, um, the variance is the same. So that is nothing else but um, 2 um, sigma square. Yeah? And now here in the denominator, I, of course, have the standard error. So I can say something about the standard error as well, which is simply taking the square root of it. So it gives you the square root of 2 sigma. Yeah? And of course, I multiply here the two standard errors, so that um, simplifies. Yeah? So let me go back now to equation 3. So um, if we use that um, now um, into equation 3, what can I say? I can now argue that my beta coefficient is equal to the covariance of delta epsilon it, delta it minus 1, divided by 2 sigma square. Yeah, so that's the first part. And we just um, note that this is my equation 5. Okay. So now the next thing we do um, is we look now at uh, the covariance term in this equation 5. So um, when we go back into into 5. So from 5 um, I want to focus um, on the numerator. So uh, the covariance, I just now use uh, standard rules, um, can be written as follows. It's simply the um, expected value of the two variables multiplied. So it's um, the change in epsilon it times the change in epsilon it minus 1. What I want to do now um, is uh, I want to um, actually write this out a bit more explicitly. Let me just make this here rectangular brackets because now it's getting a little bit, bit too busy. So I'm just writing this out explicitly because we have to multiply this out in a second. So we have here epsilon it minus 1 minus epsilon it minus 2. And then we have minus the expected value of um, delta epsilon it times the expected value of delta epsilon it minus 1. Again, this is just standard definition of a covariance. Um, we already know, um, based on our um, assumptions, so we can go back to... Um, number two, that um, because the expected value of epsilon it, the change in epsilon it also has an expected value of zero. Yeah? Because um, um, the expectations operate as a linear operator, so we know that um, all these terms are equal to zero. Yeah? So it simplifies um, to the first term. And now I will just multiply these terms out and I get the following. So this is equal to the expected value of um, epsilon it, epsilon it minus 1. So I'm just multiplying this out minus epsilon it, epsilon it minus 2. And then we obtain minus epsilon it minus 1 to the power of 2 um, plus epsilon it minus 1, epsilon it minus 2. 
So that's my term. And now again, we can, um, of course, use that the expectations operate as a linear operator. Um, and um, break this down and address each and every term independently. Now again, going back to our assumption we make under the null that um, these um, um, residuals um, are IID distributed. It means that all these terms, these um, terms that interact over time, they are evaluated to zero because um, they are IID distributed, so we know the covariance is equal to zero because the expected value is equal to zero. This translate, translates into the expected value of these, um, these products is equal to zero. Yeah? So all these term, terms here equal to zero. The only term that stands out is this term here. So we end up with minus the expected value of epsilon it minus one to the power of two. Yeah? So there's one more, more thing to note, um, and then we are basically done. Um, now we note that when you calculate um, the variance, so I just now um, write this down and put a number six here. We go back into this in a second. Um, and we note the following, um, which is very, very general, that the variance of, um, of x, which is a random variable, is simply the expected value of x to the power of 2 minus the expected value of x to the power of 2. Yeah? And in our case, um, we um, know that um, this second term is equal to 0. Yeah? So because of um, our assumption, we make under the null that um, the um, error term um, is an um, IID distributed with a mean of zero and um, a constant variance. Yeah? So put differently, the variance um, is equal to the expected value of my random variable to the power of two. Yeah? So then um, I can conclude, so from six I can con conclude the following, that um, my covariance term simplifies um, simply to minus the variance. Yeah? So my covariance term simplifies to minus sigma square. Yeah, that's all we know. Um, so that's um, helpful. And now we go back all the way back um, to equation number five and we just plug it in. So we now know it's minus sigma squared divided by two sigma squared. Well, what do you get now? Um, so if we go back into this, so finally um, we can argue the following, that beta is equal to minus sigma squared divided by two sigma squared, it's minus one half, and this is exactly what we want to show. By the way, thank you, mother, for, for watching all my videos. Much appreciated. I know you understand nothing, but at least um, you watch, at least, you know, one viewer is not too bad. So thanks for watching. You can now um, disconnect because anyway, nobody watches the end. Nobody does that. They all disconnect. So bye, mom.